Okay, so hopefully you're getting the idea now about when you want to calculate a center of gravity, of mass, centroid, we use the principle of moments. Okay? And we saw in section 5.3, is it? 5.3 and 5.2 and 5.3, and that if you've got some continuous structure, continuous and you want to add up the effects of, of these differential elements, right? These differential elements. Then you need integration, integration. However, if you've got discrete elements, discrete, uh, these are elements that can be divided, okay, clearly, and you can clearly see their shapes, then we can use summation so x bar times the total mass m is equal to the sum of the individual uh, moment arms times the individual masses right so the moment of the sum is equal to the sum of the moments or the moment of the sum of the areas is equal to the sum of the moments of the air of the individual areas right does that make sense so this is what we're going to do here uh, in the previous video we spoke about the the masses of an object the ma the we were working with trying to find the center of mass in this example we're trying to find the center of area the centroid of this area the idea is similar break it up into discrete Elements divided into discrete elements and carry out the principle of moments. Okay, so look at this really irregular, funny shape. And we have to try to find the centroid of this guy. How are we going to do it? Div di divide into discrete areas and use the principle of moments. So follow along. This is how we're going to do it. And you can actually divide it into however you want. Okay. So we're going to take this irregular shape and we're going to divide it into that area there. So we're going to choose this guy that goes right through the center. Sorry, I have a tablet. It's terrible. That is my shape one. Okay, just follow along. You'll see where we go with this. I choose that as my first shape. That's it there, right? Okay, good. Then I identify that's a shape. There is shape three. They call it shape three. I identify that triangle there. Okay, guys, please. I can't draw vertical straight lines. That's that there. That's number two. And then there's also this little rectangle there. That's four. So I've got, I've identified four discrete elements for these okay tick I've done that great I've got my four elements here are my four elements one two three four now I need to now look at each of those elements and calculate each each of their first moments of area the moment of that of each elements area about the y-axis and the x-axis because remember I'm trying to find my centroid okay the, so we, we've got these the sum of y times area so the moment the, the the moment of the sum about the y-axis sorry this is about the x-axis so we're using these two okay so this is what I do. Let's look just at element one. And what are we looking for? We're looking for the the total area of that element, and we're looking for the the moment arm or the centroid of each element. Okay, so what is the area of this of that element? It is twelve thousand millimeters squared. Go check that out. What is the x bar meaning the centroid of this element well it's 120 long so it's going to be 60 
right? That's 60 there. And what's the height of that centroid? Also 60. Okay, so it's 120 by 120. Does that make sense? Now we want we want this, an x times a, a y times a. So we calculate x bar times the area, and that's that there. We want y bar times the area, that's that there. Okay. Now let's move on to object 2, or element 2, which is a triangle. Calculate the area. I'm not going to go into all this. You can do it half base times height. Then, ha what, what is the centroid of a triangle? Maybe uh, it hasn't been explicitly taught to you yet. But we did see in a previous example, sample, sample problem 5.2 or 5.3, that if you've got a triangle, then the centroid of that triangle is going to be um, a third from the from the the big end okay so whatever that length is there it's a third it's a third of that total length from that left side and if you want to go up it's also a third of that height a third of that that length and a third of that height that's where that's going to be so that's why if you want to find the centroid of this triangle this number two you're going to have to add that total length 120 plus a third of that length a third of that length so the total length of this triangle is 50 plus 10 so it's 60 that is 60 that length there is 60 what's a third of 60 is 20 so it's 120 plus 20 and that's where that 140 comes from and what's the height? What's the y, the, the centroid of in, in the y direction? It's a third of that height. And the height is 40 plus 40 plus 20 is 100. So a third of 100 is 100 over 3. Okay, then you simply take that. And so we want xA, right? And we want yA. It comes from this, this principle of moments equation. All right, so now you've taken care of 1 and 2. Now, we introduce something new, is that these, you treat them exactly the same as you would for those, but because they are holes, okay, where they're, they're holes in the area, you, you make that area a negative area. So what is the area of this? What is the area of a half a circle? Okay, go and calculate that, see if you get the same answer. But you make it a negative area. Okay? Then what is the x bar? What's the centroid there? Well, it's going to be 30 plus 30, right? To get to the center. That's the center there. Um, actually, the centroid is there. Sorry. The centroid is there. That's my uh, x for the centroid there. And then that's y bar. For that centroid but um, the X bar is 60 but in order to get that centroid in the vertical direction please go check out table D3 to where does that 12.73 come from well it's the vertical height to the centroid of this half circle that's that's cut away okay 12.73 there's a there's a formula to calculate that centroid but the thing is guys the area is a negative area, so I take x times a, and it becomes a negative xa, and there's a negative ya for this one. And then the last one is this number 4 here, and it's also a negative area. We know it's 20 times 40 gives us 800 square millimeters. Negative area. Negative area. But now, what is, what's my x bar? All right. There's, there's my centroid of that area. So it's going to be 120. Uh, it's going to be 120. That's what it is. 120 there. And then the height is 20 plus half of 40 is 40. Okay. Then I multiply that by the minus 800. That by the minus 800, I get this. Now, all you do is, because remember what, um, in the x direction, it's x bar times the total area is the summation of my xas. So that's what we've done there is we've summed up our XA's. Make sure that you've got the negatives in there 
for the negative uh, areas. And that is my total XA's. And I simply do that for the YA's and I get my total YA's. And I calculate my X bar and my Y bar, 75 millimeters. So my X bar is going to be somewhere along that line there, something like that. And my Y bar is, no, what, what did I just do? Yes, 50.8. So 20, so it's going to be somewhere around there. So that's roughly where my centroid is of this irregular shape. Okay.